how many of you here have written a book already? Okay, published. Published books? Okay, great. Uh -huh. how, how many are in the process of writing a book? Okay, how many people are scared to death of writing a book? <laughs> oh, it's wonderful. When I first started, uh, in my first little book that I wrote, I didn't even know I was writing a book. And I didn't, uh, I had no idea that this was going to happen and it didn't mean anything to me and I didn't, uh, it was a fluke. Many, many things on my spiritual pathway have been flukes. It's like life just brings in this little incident and I think, oh, okay, I'll do that. And then the next thing I know, it's four years later and that little incident has grown and grown and become a magnet. I remember when I was first learning the stuff, the stuff. Uh, I went to a lecture quite by a fluke. Uh, the, um, a friend of mine invited me, said, I've heard that there's a very good lecture at a such and such a place, but I don't want to go by myself. Would you go with me? And I said, okay. So I went there to meet him. He didn't show up, and there I was. <laughs> and I heard someone say, if you're willing to change your thinking, you can change your life. And I went, oh, really? Really? I remember thinking, really? Really? And then the thing was to learn how to do that. But that little, that little penny dropping was a big deal. So I began my studies, and I studied this and I studied that, and I started to, um, among all the other things I was learning, I was learning things about how your thoughts influence your health and how diseases could have a thought pattern behind them that contributes to the problem you're having. And so I made a list of them because I was starting to work with some people at that time and I wanted to be able to find it easily. So I alphabetized the list and I showed it to a friend of mine and she said, oh, Louise, what a wonderful idea. Why don't you make a pamphlet out of it? And I went, oh, I do, did that in the early days. I did that a lot. Oh, <laughs> I would never have thought of that. So I looked at it again and what I did was I put two paragraphs in the front of the list and two paragraphs at the back of the list and I printed up a little pamphlet and there I had book number one, but I didn't know it. And um, I remember going to my teacher and proudly showing him this little booklet and I said, you know what, what I've done? <laughs> and he said, oh, Louise, isn't that sweet? How many did you have made? 50? And I said, no, 5,000. <laughs> Well, I discovered that if you print, the more you print, the cheaper the object gets. And it turned out that, you know, 5000 was really not a bad price at all. So then he looked at me and he said, oh, you're crazy. You'll never sell this thing. But two years later, I had sold the last of the 5000 And it's, life just uh, took care of it. From the moment I've set my foot on the spiritual pathway, Life has taken care of me and said, you will do this, you will do this, you will do this, step by step. And I never thought about, oh, I'm going to make money or how can I get rich on this or anything. My thoughts have always been, how can I help the people? So I took my little book and I uh, found a list of almost every metaphysical church in the country and I sent a free copy with an order form. And it was amazed how many churches actually ordered, you know, a dozen or so, which was very nice. And then I noticed also in where I was in the church bookstore that um, if a person picked up the book, they would buy it. But a lot of people didn't pick up the book because they didn't understand the title. So when I sold the 5,000, I immediately retitled it and added more things to it. And that little book has grown forever. And then the second book that I wrote, that was several years later, 
I um, was doing workshops at the time, and I had about 350 people on weekend workshops, and I did it all myself. I didn't know at the time I could have help. <laughs> But we were getting rather good results. People were understanding the principles I was teaching, and if they would practice them, they would have good things, they, positive changes in their lives. So I thought to myself, if I could put this on paper, I could help more people. I know I could. So I took six months, I, I did a gamble, and I took six months off to make this workshop into a book. And I had no clue what I was doing, not a clue. But I did know one thing, that I would not take it to a publisher, or the big boys as I called them, because I figured they wouldn't let me say what I wanted to say. And I wanted to say this exactly as I wanted to say it. So I wrote the book, it took me six months, I printed it once again, and uh, I was so disappointed when it arrived. I wanted this heart on the picture, on the, uh, and a rainbow heart. But the person who printed the book put the colors in the wrong order. And instead of having the red on the outside, it was dark purple. And it was like to me, oh my God, it looked black. And I thought, oh no, oh no. And I couldn't redo it. It has already been printed and I paid for it. <sighs> So I just, you know, I used it. I had to make do with what I had, but it, it wasn't what I really wanted. And I used to, I was teaching workshops, and I remember that I used to put change and dollar bills in a bowl and have the books there, and people could just make change and buy the books. And you know, in all the time that I did that, I only had one book taken from me. Only one. Everybody else made change, and if they didn't have enough, they'd leave a little extra. When life calls us, that's when we have to answer. People say, how did you do everything that you did? Well, I answered the telephone and opened the mail and did what, it, what was in front of me. And then life would give me something else to do and something else to do. And it's interesting because it's now been, I think, 25 years since I wrote the second book, You Can Heal Your Life. And in that period of time, I, that book alone has sold 40 million copies worldwide. <laughs> and I feel, I've always felt that I didn't do anything to promote it at all. It's just life took over and life said this book is going to go to this country and this book is going to go to this country and go to this country and it's gone many, many places all over the world. I even have two Chinese versions. There's the Chinese version of uh, traditional China and then there's the Chinese version of the Taiwan, which is the new China. You never know where life is going to take your work. And I think that it's important that you don't go into it to say, how much money can I make? Oh, I'm going to be rich. I've got to do this. Because books don't make you that rich. But what they do is open the world to you. And my thought has always been, how can I help the people? How can I help the people? And I think if you come from that point of view, it becomes a lot easier. 